Due to the rapid changes in the population on Long Island, there has been a massive turnover in housing, with families and marginal earners being pushed out by the exorbitant cost of living. Our aging population is also being forced out by the increased cost of heating, lighting, and food. We're among the highest taxed people in the nation. On top of that, add the economic turndown and foreclosures, and the stage has been set for tragedy on a large scale. On the last roundup, we've talked about the human toll of this economic meltdown, but what about our feline and canine friends, often abandoned as families are forced out of their homes into smaller quarters, less expensive states, or even into the street? The result of the economic chaos is an exploding population of homeless and feral cats in urban and suburban settings. These poor creatures live in the harshest of conditions, scavenging for food and shelter. Our family has always had cats and dogs, but after the painful death of two old feline friends, I really had no intention of ever owning a pet again. One of the dozens of feral cats now roaming around the area had a different idea. She had a litter of kittens in our backyard. That litter was part of a mini population explosion in our neighborhood. That's when my wonderful neighbor Stacy, after some internet research, set out to do something about the problem before desperate measures had to be taken by animal control. In coordination with cooperating vets in the area, she set out to methodically trap each one of the wild cats in humane traps so that they could be spayed and neutered screened for disease and then released back into the area where they were captured. The reproductive cycle is very hard on animals in the wild, so once spayed, they live much longer, healthier lives. Only animals with inoperable maladies or deadly contagious diseases are euthanized. While many of these animals were and are so feral, that means wild, that they cannot and will not live with humans, at least they won't be reproducing in such great numbers that the local environment will not support them. Once released, they live in little tribes where they hunt the local mice and go house to house where neighbors can now feed them without feeling guilty about contributing to the population explosion. As a result of the catch and release program, a number of kittens and cats that are not feral are being held for adoption. About 20 older kittens and adults ranging in age from one to one and a half years are available for immediate adoption to qualified parties. All of these cats have been spayed or neutered, have been tested for feline AIDS and leukemia, have been vaccinated against rabies, and have been given a three-in-one shot. All have also been defleed and dewormed. They're all friendly, but some are a bit shy and need to be brought out of their shells with some tender loving care. I can't say enough about the big hearts of the veterinarians donating their time and services. If you're interested in adding a new member to your family and are listening in the New York metropolitan area, please contact Joanne at 516-781-1267. That's 516-781-1267. Those listening on shortwave and the internet around the nation and the world not able to adopt can donate to this remarkable effort to stabilize the feral and stray cat populations by donating to HUG, H-U-G, Humane Urban Group, P.O. Box, 4025 Great Neck, New York 11023 That's HUG H period U period G period Humane Urban Group P.O. Box 4025 Great Neck, New York 11023 My research suggests that most communities in the U.S. are developing some sort of feral cat trap, neuter, and release program. In most places, these services are subsidized or free thanks to some wonderful volunteers. Please support your local outreach, and if no such program exists in your area, try to get one started like my wonderful neighbor did. 
Well, as a way to prove that I practice what I preach, I've taken three of these little guys into my home. 